Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus R, the final expansion of a Guilty Gear game that spanned a decade, has spent the last eight years as a niche, old-school anime fighter played by diehards and side events. But with a recent netcode beta experiment, the game has been thrust back into the spotlight and given a second chance. This is Guilty Gear Rebirth. Guilty Gear is what introduced me to fighting games, really. What you would look at as an indie developer these days in Arxis, this very small company with, you know, essentially a passion project in one man in ishiwatari son who wanted to make a fighting game that was complicated, based around heavy metal, and have wild art and offense, and literally did it all, you know, wrote the music, designed the characters, came up with the engine. I mean, first and foremost, Guilty Gear is a beautiful game. You know, I'm a heavy metal fan, and a lot of Guilty Gear's original sort of aesthetic sense was rooted in rock and roll more broadly, but especially heavy metal. There's a lot of satanic imagery and sort of even queer culture. The main thing that I think almost everyone who loves Guilty Gear will say is the amount of freedom you have. Guilty Gear is a very high-paced game. There's lots of movement in it. Uh, there's lots of ways to express yourself in a very organic way. You've got characters that can dash fast, that can run, they can double jump, they can air dash, they can do all kinds of things. Every character is really different and expressive in their own unique way. Guilty Gear brings sort of this wild energy where there's a lot of decisions going on all at once, and there's a lot of subtle interactions that are enabled by mechanics like FRCs. Each character has to be thought about completely differently, and even within the characters, players of a character, you can tell them apart even just by watching them play. Styling on them! <laughs> Styling on them! <laughs> I don't know, I think it just adds like a lot of extra variety to the fighting game scene and it kind of has helped shape what it has become because of so many other games that have taken inspiration from it. It is a game where the best players really do not play other games. They don't even play other characters. But it's such a complex game, it's such a matchup heavy game, and literally every single character is viable. In isolated situations, it's not easy to determine what the best thing is. You kind of do what you think is right in a lot of places, even when you play the game for a long time. You know, even players who've been playing this game for a decade plus, uh, you'll find players who just kind of go with the flow. They do what they think is right. And that and the reunion. <laughs> Mahoko leaning back in his chair like, why didn't I see it coming? From the very beginning, Guilty Gear, one of the modern anime fighting game genre's progenitors, sought to bring something distinct and unique to the already well-populated genre of fighting games in the late 90s and early 2000s. The thing that's really interesting about the XX series is it has a very similar path to Street Fighter 2. It was clearly something that was going to be built off of, so it got new versions quickly. We went from XX to Reload to Slash and then Accent Core literally in a course of about four years. Back in those days, that was nuts. You know, at that point, Marvel was already working on its 10 years. Street Fighter 3 had been the latest Street Fighter game for six, seven years. Then Accent Core hit in 2006, and that's that was it. We played it for years and years because there was no new version of Guilty Gear. That was when Arxis had moved on to starting to develop Blaze Blue, and that was kind of their core focus, was getting this new series off the ground. When we look at the finished product of Plus R today, it's easy to miss what was a rich history of reworks, major tournaments, and the birth of a scene that has followed the franchise in its meteoric rise ever since. You know, Guilty Gear was definitely one of the, probably the earliest anime fighter that got really big and had a really big following uh, to it. Action Core was really the game that, it got it a lot more into like the bigger, I guess you could say like more like esports events, right? And anime fighters back in that era weren't super popular either, uh, and Guilty Gear really didn't have that many competitors. It was like the premium anime game, because this is before Blaze Blue too. We started playing it and that was it. There were no updates, there were no changes. It was the game for almost eight years straight. Certainly, this is definitely an era where you're going to your local tournaments, right? Um, you're talking on Dust Loop. There's no Discord, there's no Twitter. Um, so you're, you're definitely tapping into that kind of quote unquote OG veteran energy as far as local arcades and kind of, you know, going up the food chain. Accent Core was still a main game at Evo. It was getting, you know, final day billing. You were having, at that time, you know, two, 300 people enter, which at that point for Guilty Gear, that's a massive, massive tournament. But I think it's helped us connect with the Japanese scene. There's been a lot of rivalry, a lot of interaction, a lot of, you know, events over the years, a lot of mutual interest, I think, between each other's scenes. It brings, like, players from all over the world together at, at certain events. <laughs> Thank you.
Accent Core was the premier Guilty Gear game from 2007 up until late 2012, when the developer released Plus R, an expansion that fundamentally changed Guilty Gear XX once again. There had been no updates to the XX series for almost eight years leading up to Plus R. They basically took a lot of experimental ideas that they had put into an extra mode in Guilty Gear XX Axon Core. They had EX characters, and EX characters were just this silly little thing. You didn't really play with them in tournament. They were banned. They were they do all kinds of goofy stuff. We're just gonna change stuff up. We're gonna we're gonna give characters moves they haven't had since Guilty Gear X. We're gonna completely overhaul how certain characters play. You had this drive to make all of the characters separate a little more, make them more different from each other, such that you supported a lot of complexity in the, in the playstyles that people were able to operate with. It's difficult in a fun way is learning the matchups because like the way say Faust might fight against Justice and the way say Chip is going to fight against Justice is going to be extremely different approach or the other way around if the way I fight against a Justice player or a Biken player is going to be extremely different. They really helped improve the quality of life for many of the weaker characters in the game. And they toned down many of the kind of overly strong characters as well coming from Accent Core. And it actually worked out quite well. Plus R is actually a, a great version of Guilty Gear. It's pretty damn well balanced. A lot of characters that hadn't been viable in Accent Core became viable again. Plus R was a fresh injection of excitement for Guilty Gear fans, but its release was pretty quickly overshadowed by the announcement of the next major installment of the Guilty Gear series, Guilty Gear Exert. When you had Exert on the horizon, it was kind of hard to have the same level of hype we would have if it would have been a new version back when there was no new series even on the radar coming out. It very much felt like an inevitability of this is great, it's just enough to keep us entertained and busy until this new amazing title is about to drop in our laps. There was a lot of ambiguity, it was really close together. The American release, the, the console release of, of Plus R came out. There was ambiguity as to whether we'd keep running both games or whether there'd be a community split. With Exert coming out, you know, you're moving over to these next-gen systems, you have this new engine that looks absolutely stunning. You know, we kind of take for granted what Arxis does with its animations and its its ability to make 3D games look and play like 2D games. I think you'll find a lot of people including Japanese players, including people from all around the world who were on that same kind of mindset that, you know, Exert is coming out, it's a new version of the game, I'm gonna play Exert, and then you play Exert and you stick with it, and it was competitive, it got a lot of support, it, you know, it was a good game. Well, it's really hard to juggle multiple versions of the same game. Some characters are just completely different, just things are very different, you, you can't really go back and forth. While there are a couple of people who stuck to it and competed the whole time, a lot of the scene moved over to Exert because, you know, it's super pretty and brought in a lot of new people. You know, you went from every Guilty Gear player at a major entering Plus R to everyone's entering Exert and maybe a third of the players are still entering Plus R. And we had the World Tour, we had Exert at EVO. Um, and the last time Guilty Gear was at EVO in an uh, in a official way was in 2009. That was the last Axon Core tournament at EVO. Divine Blade trying oh, to beat the dead angle! Machabo is our Guilty Gear Exert! Revelator, Evil 2016 champion. Black Snake versus Elven Shadow for all the money. Remember, there is a $500 pop bonus on the line here at Frosty Faustings 5. Of course, the greater FGC, riding a wave of growth and new titles, moved on from featuring the older Plus R. But longtime passionate players and event runners like Elven Shadow helped keep the game's torch lit all this time with events like Frosty Faustings, an annual Midwest showcase with a strong foundation for Guilty Gear. The main focus of the event has always been Guilty Gear. From the very beginning, when I when I started the event in, I think it was like 2008, Guilty Gear was the main event, and it has been ever, ever since. So whatever the newest Guilty Gear title was the main event at Frosty. But like, Plus R is an amazing game, and a lot of people still wanted to play it. And there's no reason why we can't run two Guilty Gear games. And so, yeah, we've always supported it and kept running it, and we always will. I'm not going to drop uh, running Plus R. The Guilty Gear series itself continued to grow into a major fighting game entity with an ever-growing community. Plus R was down, but certainly not out, and a growing, player-led movement from within the fighting game community was about to give it just the stroke of good fortune it had been waiting for. There's been a lot of talk about netcode in the FTC recently, and for good reason. As the scene continues to grow and more and more fighting games are released, players need every opportunity to help sharpen their skills as well as keep their games communities active. Back then, you know, talking about netcode, Plus R was 
unplayable, like beyond unplayable. Delay-based, bad connections, trying to run through old Xbox Live or PSA. It was literally, you couldn't play it online. For the longest time, the American scene of fighting games generally has been really different in concerns and considerations from the Japanese scene. In Japan, they are extremely geographically co-located. In America, it's really different from Japan because we're so spread out. We have such a wide geographic area that people are considering the same region. Especially for anime games for delay-based netcode, it's tough because those games are fast. They really, you know, drive the line between what's reactable, what's not reactable. Once you just add in those, you know, two, three frames of delay, certain things become real that were not real and certain things just you can't deal with anymore. You know, it comes from the school of thought of asynchronous event handling in computer science and it's widely used for web development and things like that. You care more about having parity with the inputs and muscle memory that fighting gamers are used to practicing and getting good at, and breaking that is way more of a problem than, you know, breaking visual parity. Building your new titles with the idea in mind that there's no excuse to not make it playable for everyone around the world in a, in a whole lot of situations. Even before the pandemic, I feel like players were really hoping to get good support for the game, to grind the game out more, and, and we've always kind of just suffered through. And the pandemic has kind of the proof of why it's so necessary, not just in fighting games, but why online games have become so important, because I guess you never know when you're going to end up in social isolation for over a year. Amidst the rising tide of fan-made netcode fixes, modern fighters with rollback, and general player outcry, Arc System Works, the developer of Guilty Gear, decided that testing out rollback netcode in an experimental environment ahead of their upcoming title Strive would be a good learning experience, to say the least. November of 2019, a couple of people were talking on the Plus R Discord about trying to do this. And then when that announcement that it wasn't just a fan project, that Arxis had decided we are taking this on, we, we like what was proposed, this is an official Arxis project now. That came out of nowhere. Then I was super excited. I started going into training mode for the game and trying to get the rust off and stuff. The first match I get into, I'm like, this feels like I am playing on the couch with my friends out in Omaha or Chicago. This is literally the first release of this, and it's the best Guilty Gear I've ever played outside of being with another person on the console side by side. Obviously, it's not completely like offline, but it's about the closest you're ever going to get. And I say that um, from a technical perspective. I've implemented rollback code myself. Once I saw how much like people wanted to play it again, it really, really made me like super hyped to just go all in on this game now. I can't pass up this flawless online experience. Now I'm all in on it, and I've been doing so well, and I'm just having a great time entering like three, four tournaments a week now. I think it was the first or second night they said it had the largest concurrent player base of any Arxis game on Steam in history. You know, if that doesn't tell you the power of rollback netcode, I don't know what does. Everyone all over the country can compete all at once from the comfort of their own home. The renewed interest in the game because of that has driven a lot more people in and it's just crazy to be in a tournament this big. I don't think I ever have. The fact that people were giving this game a legitimate shot just because suddenly you had really easy access. That was just the dopest thing to see. Yeah, I, I'm just really happy that the game is getting kind of another, you know, another shot, another revitalization. After the initial influx of players for the netcode beta, the Plus R scene found themselves with more than just a quick spotlight. They had the telltale signs of a growing community once again. There's new people coming into the scene. We've got like people interested in learning the game. We've got people I haven't seen in 10, 15 years coming back. You had tons of people who hadn't really played Guilty before. Watching them learn the game and enjoy it was a blast. You know, I was in like Super News chat all the time back then, uh, Leffen as well. We had Sage and learn the game. It was just really cool to see all these people coming out and trying the game. Players who'd never played or really paid much attention to Guilty Gear are in the same situation as, as the rest of us. You know, we're stuck at home, there's nothing to do. I can actually learn this game. I can play real players. I can get some feedback. We had beginner tournaments coming up. We had all we had huge tournaments game, huge online tournaments with hundreds of people. It was like nonsensical numbers. I am very excited when I open a lobby or and I jump in a lobby and I see someone who is literally trying to get their sixth win out of like 700 games. Like that that to me is the most encouraging sign you can see. Good evening, friends. Welcome back to the main event of Frosty Faustings 13, the online edition. We are at the top eight for Guilty Gear Accent Core Plus R, the biggest Plus R tournament 
ever held. And it's all thanks to Rollback Netcode, our Lord and Savior here in 2021. We just finished running Frosty Faustings online 13, 13 online, whatever. Turned out way bigger than we were we were originally thinking. Like first we, we had registration at 256 and it capped like in a couple days. It was really fast. So we got more staff, more volunteers, more people to help us. Then we raised the cap to 512 and we ended up with about 458 players or something like that after registration closed. The, the highest record was like about just under 450 or something prior to that for a beginner's tournament for the beta that actually happened a few months prior to that. Hopefully someone can beat us because I want to see even bigger ones so I can try and one-up them again. <laughs> like many legacy games, Plus R is not considered easy. Fortunately for this community, there is a massive trove of data, forum posts, and instructional content, all more accessible than ever before on the modern internet to speed up the learning process for any newcomers. It's actually really crazy to me to see people who are new to the game learn at such a ridiculous speed because of the resources available now with community, with people you can ask questions of and you can grind out games with people at your level. I think that the commentary and all the content that people produce is more focused around teaching people the game, encouraging them. And but people who've never touched Guilty before have gone to a place that's taken older players, you know, back in the 2006, 2007 era, years to get to. I think it's not that hard to get into as long as you're just willing to kind of stick with it a little bit. And once you get over that initial hurdle, you start feeling amazing when you land stuff. You convert like crazy stuff off hits and just... You, let, you get like sick Oki mix-ups, like it's just a great feeling. And I think the more, the better you get and the more you play it, the more rewarding it is. Just like universal praise for what this is. This, this net code is good. Everybody's enjoying playing it. Everyone is super positive about the game right now. That's not easy to do with any fighting game, but especially games like Guilty Gear that are, are known for having extremely grimy, extremely oppressive characters and, and offense and, and general gameplay. It's my favorite version of the game. I've been playing it under the assumption that I'm gonna basically play it until my hands break. <laughs> I really do think it is similar to games like Melee and Third Strike, games that you know stand the test of time, games that you can look to and play and they still feel fresh now. After a while, games start to become about the innovation and the players and what they're doing and how they're thinking about how each other are thinking. I think that people are to this day still pushing the envelope, and to me that's the sign of a thriving, enduring, competitive game. You can't ever achieve perfection in really any fighting game, but especially a game like Guilty Gear. And even just seeing the, the changes from finding like, you know, videos in 2013, 2014 from Mikado, and then seeing like Evil Japan had plus R in 2019 and you just see the difference in play and it's it's borderline night and day. People are still discovering new things and figuring out answers and right now we're all trying to beat Elven Shadow. <laughs> Much like last time, Plus R's sudden success is, by design, meant as an appetizer before a major new Guilty Gear release. But things are different now. 2021's Guilty Gear Strive and 2012's Plus R appear to serve such different purposes that the future of each game can be independent and positive. I think that there are definitely some more road bumps and hurdles ahead of us because Guilty Gear Strive is coming out this year. Plus R may continue to dwindle because it is an older game, it is a very high demanding game, and you have this very, very shiny new toy about to drop in Guilty Gear Strive. Arc System Works is going to go all in on the promotion of Strive. A lot of people are really excited about it, but I think that they're trying new things and it'll be really interesting, and I think that they're going for kind of a more mainstream appeal. It's definitely designed to be a new experience. The devs even said that they're trying not to cater to the old players or give them an inherited advantage off the, uh, uh, from the start. I agree with that. I don't feel very powerful when I play that game. Like, I don't feel like my, you know, whatever, 18 years of competitive Guilty Gear experience helped me that much. Strive is going to be a very different Guilty Gear, not just from XX, but from Xert itself. And I think they're going to be so different that a game like Plus R can actually exist in harmony alongside it. I definitely think that the plus R scene can still grow, grow and grow because we have access to such a huge array of tools now as people are getting better at running tournaments. The situation we're in now has really forced us to be experts at running online events. Well, for one, Matcharino has been really great because 
since we haven't had the ability to have pay to enter tournaments like with the traditional brackets where there's a little more prize money, you know, we now have Match Arena, which has been a huge support for all the Plus R tournaments. What we need to do to maintain a large player base is keep our community like welcoming to everybody and just try and be like, you know, open to new players, regardless of like who they are, where they come from. My hope is that both that and obviously Strive continue to have enough interest and success through the rest of the pandemic that hopefully next year we can start really seeing these games shine on the brightest stages at these major events with full production, full commentary, you know, the crowd cheering and going going off, getting hype. Arc, you know, did a great job hiring French Cali Burst and, and all those guys to put all those changes in for the netcode and the training mode buffs and the take control feature from playback. That's like the coolest thing I've seen put into a fighting game to help you learn how to play. Um, Frosty will always run it. I hope other events uh, continue to run it too. And uh, hopefully Ark can throw us a bone and give us a PS4 port <laughs> so that we can run offline events a little easier with the same quality they brought us with this great PC version. In the end, Plus R has given its diehard players the greatest gifts any fighting game can give. Community, friendship, beautiful moments, and so much more. Competitive things are really different from other kinds of things because you're working against another human. You're having a conversation with their mind. You're trying to make them fail and they're trying to make you fail. So many unique interactions with, with other people that I would never have if I weren't striving to knock them out of the tournament. And also this creates a deep kind of friendship that I have with some people that you just can't have any other way it makes me feel like alive and a it gives me a rush and like winning a tournament is such a good feeling um even if you lose just knowing you played well when you did and just the community's great like so many of my friends that i've met are are through the guilty gear scene and there's tons of other games i love as well um but guilty gear really will always have something for me that no other game can truly match it really is the single most important game of my life, and, and I don't see myself ever moving away from it. I'm sure there'll be a time where my old man hands can't allow me to actually remotely be competitive anymore, but I've loved doing commentary for this game for the past, you know, six, seven, eight years. I'm just going to keep doing it as long as the, the people who, who want to play it are people I enjoy playing it with, and then there's a, a strong, healthy scene, and, and I'll do my best to help keep it alive. All right, well... Uh... Put on your clown shoes and play Guilty Gear. <laughs>I guess I'll tell the story. I don't know if it's going to make it in this gut or not, but, you know, when I was in college, I went to a certain club that was associated with various things. I basically stood up during the break in the club time, and I just said, does anybody play Guilty Gear? Like, I just said that, like the most cringe thing. But I found somebody who played Guilty Gear that way because I, I had an arcade fortunate enough for me at my college. <laughs>